Eamon, you are the author of our new IEA primer on Ludwig von Mises and director of the Adam Smith Institute. The primer can be downloaded from the IEA's website. I wonder if you could just start by telling us about how von Mises fits into the Austrian, in particular um, how his work fits into that of other Austrians such as Friedrich Hayek with whom uh, readers of this primer might be more familiar. Well he's the father of the modern Austrian school I and mean, the Austrian school started in the 1870s uh, with Karl Menger uh, and other people who, who were uh, his followers. Um, but uh, Mises, who flourished at the, in the early years of the 20th century, uh, was the person who took all of that work and revamped it and reorganized it and, and brought in some new ideas. And he was um, a teacher of Hayek. He, uh, uh, Hayek was actually formerly one of his students, but only attended one of his lectures because he thought uh, Mises was far too right-wing. Uh, but um, uh, gradually they came to work together and they became great friends. Um, and they worked on business cycle theory for which Hayek got the Nobel Prize. Um, so uh, he, he, Mises, helped to, to get Hayek going, uh, and from there other people have followed, and of course uh, people like Maury Rothbard in, uh, in America are very much in the Mises school. So is it a case really of um, Hayek standing on the shoulders of Mises, or are there uh, aspects of Mises' work which really have survived and are, are still important in their own right? Uh, well, I think that Hayek and Mises are actually quite different. I think they come from different intellectual traditions, curiously, although they were both born in, in Vienna. Oh, sorry, they weren't born in Vienna, but they both lived in Vienna. Um, and uh, Hayek is more in the British empirical school, whereas Mises sees economics as a deductive process. He says that economics is extremely complicated. It depends on human values. Uh, human values pervade everything. It's not a mechanical thing like, like physics or chemistry. It's very much more subtle than that. And all you can do is sort of deduce from the idea of human action. You can deduce how people might react. Um, whereas um, Hayek, I think, uh, believes that, yes, there are certain things that, that you can deduce, but um, you actually have to look at the real world and make sure that you are looking at the real world. And sometimes the real world will contradict your ideas. So they're quite different in some, some respects. And um, is von Mises relevant to the economic student of today? Should, um, should your primer, or indeed the original works of von Mises, be on the shelves of your sixth former and sixth formers and, and undergraduate students uh, at university studying economics today? Well, I've no doubt that the primer should certainly be on their shelves. Uh, when you deal with Mons, uh, von Mises himself, of course, he's very much a, a creature of his time, and he's talking about the First World War and the Second World War and the the economic problems of that time, uh, and this does pervade his language, and it can be very difficult for students to penetrate that. And uh, he also has a, a strange style where, where he can be very academic and technical on one page, and the next page is a vitriolic attack on, on one of his uh, intellectual opponents. And again, people find this difficult to manage. That's one of the reasons why I was very keen to do a primer, so, so to distill out the central ideal or the ideas without um, actually get, getting too involved in, in Mises' particular hobby horses and so on. Um, but I think there are many things that we can learn. For example, his views on the business cycle. Um, this is something which, um, with the world uh, economic crisis of 2007-2008 and, and indeed continuing, uh, it is something which uh, Mises would have predicted. He uh, predicted that um, w when you have money in being controlled by governments, um, they tend to inflate it. They, they like more and more money, and if they can print it, they print it. Uh, so you get a fake boom, and people invest in things which in normal circumstances wouldn't make any sense at all. Uh, and eventually that comes to an end. You can't sustain that forever, because if you've got a, a currency which is just getting more and more worthless, people start objecting. And, and, and so the boom eventually comes to an end. And then what happens? Well, the answer is that all of those investments that people have made are, are now shown uh, to be wrong, mistaken, that there isn't actually the business there to sustain them. So all of that money is wasted. Factories close, people lose their jobs, firms collapse. Uh, and I think Mises could indeed would have predicted that. And what would Ron Mises have thought about two of the great hobby horses of undergraduate economics today? One is the use of very formal and complicated mathematics. And the other is this market failure model, whereby students are encouraged to think of a perfect market, um, to explore where deviations might exist from some sort of um, 
uh, a perfect market theoretical model and how you can use policy to move the market back to where the perfect market model says it ought to be? Well, spot on, uh, Philip. I, I think um, he says that economics is about individuals. It's about individual values. And values are personal. Uh, they're as personal as grief or joy or pleasure. Um, you can't measure them. Uh, you certainly can't stick them into mathematical formulae and get anything useful out at the end. Um, once you start doing that, once you start going right down the road of uh, applying formulae to things, you lose sight of reality. Uh, and and your, your, your economics becomes completely worthless because it's not rooted in anything real. So he says, you, it, the economist doesn't, is, isn't a, a psychologist, but you have to understand something about how people make choices based on their systems of values. And that's extremely important and it under, underlines the whole of economics. Uh, and then again, on interventionism and socialism, uh, Mises has a huge amount to say, and, and he really led the early 20th century debates on this on this subject. Um, and he points out that markets, again, are very, very complicated things. If you intervene in one, uh, you will have all sorts of side effects in others that may or may not be good. Uh, for example, he says um, it's quite common that politicians uh, want to make life easier for poorer people. So let's say that they um, say, well, poorer people can't afford milk, so let's limit the price of milk so that they can afford it. Well, limiting the price of milk means that it's less uh, profitable to produce milk, uh, less milk is produced, uh, fewer cows are, are, are raised, um, and uh, that, that in, in turn affects the market for cheese and butter and all sorts of other things. Um, and milk might then be used as a, if it's cheap, it might be used as a substitute for other things for which really there are better things to do. So uh, he says that it, it upsets the, it, it sends a ripple through the entire market structure and something which has been finely tuned and balanced in, uh, in order to uh, get things that people want to where they are, that becomes disrupted and you get all sorts of side effects and then you have to intervene into those and then you have to intervene into the side effects of those and so it goes on. And, and you can't, can't model those. And you can't model those side effects either. Well, you, uh, well, you, well you don't know what they're going to yes. be. Yeah. If you did know what you, <laughs> they're yes. going to be, you wouldn't intervene in the yeah. first place. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the market can do it better than, a, yes. than an economic mm -hmm. planner can. Yeah. Okay, finally, um, I wonder what, what you would, if you had ten minutes with a, a new member of parliament, what you might say to them about the um, relevant of von Mises to political economy and practical policy making as far as today's politicians are concerned? Well, I think that I would say that, uh, as, as Hayek, I think, would have said, that, that they have to be aware of their own ignorance, that there is so much that we don't know. Uh, we don't know exactly how people will react to particular choices ahead of them. Uh, Mises uh, points out over and over again that um, we, uh, any, any of us who are making, who are working our way through life, we never know what we will choose until we're actually presented with the choice. And then we might surprise ourselves, because it depends on our own circumstances at the time, and uh, how we're feeling, and what we think about the future, and, uh, and all of those things. So uh, we never quite know how people are going to react. So I think the, the message I would like to leave my Member of Parliament with is uh, uh, when you do intervene in these markets, you never quite know how people are going to react to and sometimes they will react in ways which are quite the opposite from what uh, you intended. Indeed, usually they'll in, uh, operate in those ways. Thank you very much.